pilolo, oh pilolo, pilolo, inka pilolo, oh pilolo, inka pilolo, oh pilolo, oh pilolo, oh pilolo, oh pilolo. Well, Pilolo is um, a traditional African game that you can describe as hide and seek. Um, I picked Pilolo as a concept to, to showcase the transatlantic slave trade, how it went on in this Osu area. And as data shows us, most people that were captured in this area were shipped into the Danish Caribbean, St. Croix, St. Thomas, the U.S. Virgin Islands. So these people are missing from us. And those of us left on the motherland here are also hiding away from them. So just like the game of Pilolo, we're, we're hiding from each other. And normally when you play Pilolo, at the end of the game, everybody comes back and there is a song that goes, Pilolo ya Bebi, which means, in Pilolo, we don't cry. So I picked Pilolo to be the name of this festival to end that sadness that will make people cry. That is the reason why I selected Pilolo as the name of this festival to wipe everybody's tears. Anyone who's been wronged by the transatlantic slave trade, by coming to Pilolo, we're asking for forgiveness and we're asking for a new rebirth of the African dream, that the African Renaissance would kickstart from this Pilolo Festival. Or 12 years ago, uh, I got uh, the opportunity, you know, to research about the uh, history of the people of Osu as a result of reading a book written by a Danish man about the coast of slaves. And when I read the book, I realized that the coast of slaves is all about Osu. But I realized that there are things which haven't been properly presented in that book. It was not a story being told by us, but it was a story being told by other people. So I did re this, re this research to uh, uh, put the uh, history in the right perspective from our point of view, you know, and that uh, led into publishing the book called uh, Stones Tell Stories at Osu, mm -hmm. Memories of a uh, Host Community of the Transatlantic Slave, Slave Trade. My name is Ia Awatunde, Ia Osalana, Judy Ella Brandt Al Bilali. And I'm very pleased to say that name because there's much history there. The Brandt is my maiden name, the name I was, uh, you know, Judy Brandt grew up with. And 
frankly, being a Pan-Africanist and being raised by conscious parents, the brand always felt kind of alien until I came here and experienced Pilolo and discovered that it was the key to my finding home and being rooted in Ghana, specifically in Osu, Osu Alata. Brandt apparently is a Danish name that came with Danish colonialism that was changed, corrupted, morphed into Bryant. So the spelling is B-R-A-N-D-T. It's now B-R-I-A-N-D-T. And when Abraham kept saying Judy Bryant, Judy Bryant was saying, Abraham is not my name. But he sees Brandt and Bryant as the same name. And it really wasn't until a couple of days that it dawned on me, literally like dawn. Like the light went on. I said, I saw it in the book and I stared at it for about 10 minutes. There's a section how Brant became Bryant. And so I put the pieces together of having a grandmother from St. Croix. My mother saying, you know, your grandmother said that you came from a West African prince. All this was my father's line. And since I have been a practitioner of Ifa, whenever my egun, whenever my ancestors come up, it's always my father's line. There's much more to this story because my grandfather and my grandmother were not together. We don't know, up until now, the name of my grandfather. We didn't know anything about him. I'm telling you, he has been talking to me this week and present with me in a way that I have never experienced before in my life. So that's just a fragment of how this name that I didn't want to be associated with because of its European connection has now come full, full force back and said, this is where you belong. Consciously, the thing that brought me to Ghana was not the Pilolo Festival. However, I was soon able to find out why I was brought to Ghana because it was through the spirit of Pilolo and the Pilolo Festival that I was divinely selected, in my opinion, by my ancestors to be located at the right place at the right time so I could make the right connections, not only with the people involved in the Pilolo Festival, but also the spirit that is being cultivated for centuries. And uh, I, I would have to say that at the end of the festival, I realized that that was the reason as to why I was brought to Ghana, was to connect with, make meaningful connections of the same spirit of reconnecting the diaspora with the continent. Bimbe du mien, 
Baby, many a two me down, go be swam, I'm in to so cry So back to me, I'm in Bonnie Yeah, now you're in the patrimony, I'm in the name We've been out here, shall we dream of our own kind Hey, I think I'm in the bar My phone was in the crowd, to me, the chair I'm in the bar, I'm in the bar I felt that we were doing something not only for myself because I was moved uh, emotionally, um, but I was able to release those emotions and what are emotions? It's energy in motion. I was able to put that energy into motion to clear the energy for future uh, ceremonies and rituals like that, like that to take place. So as someone who was part of the inaugural Pillar Love Festival, I feel, com I feel entirely honoured. I feel a strong sense of connection to the idea and the concept and it was able to not only nourish my soul but in my belief was able to lay the foundations for others to have a similar experience. Ni, the chief king asking us for forgiveness, I could have in another moment thrown my arms around him and said everything's forgiven, we're home. They they always knew, our ancestors always knew we would make it home. And we'd make it home with so much to share and to give to our family here and receive as well. And I loved, he said it very poignantly, I loved that he said, we will never forget you. Please do not ever forget us. We have a saying, Ablikuma, Abakuma, Ablikuma which means uh, the uh, strangers, we need them. They are not strangers. So my message is, I need them now, not tomorrow, now. I need all of them here in Ghana. That's my message. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Pilolo is a beautiful metaphor for lost and found and for seeking. Also the fact that it's a child's game. And as we spoke about this morning, my work with Brown Paper, it's all about games. Games is, are how we form social relationships, how we learn how to, quote, win and lose, how you fall down and make a mistake and get up again. So games are 100% key to how I teach theater. And the idea that an African game, a West African game, was a key to my discovering this huge piece of my identity and feeling so at home in Osu was major. There's a lot of culturally responsive teaching going on around in the United States. So if you are, you believe in your Af Afrocentric and you believe in the African culture, this is the time to come home to learn. So when you stand in that classroom 
and try to teach African culture, you will be genuine and authentic. And whatever you say, you, sh you must have seen, not just read, but have lived it. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think the Pillolo Festival is creating a bridge for you between the African diaspora and the motherland. And it's, uh, the earlier you get on that bandwagon, the better it is.